Hi YouTubers, G String Wonder here. I want to show you my latest thrift store find. It's an Edaphone uh, voice writer. It's a dictation machine that was manufactured sometime in the 1930s, I guess. I don't know, 1930s, 1940s. It doesn't have a model number, it's just the Edaphone voice writer. It uh, recorded on wax cylinders, kind of like the original um, Edison and uh, Columbia, I don't know who else made uh, cylinder recorders and players, but anyway, this was used for dictation. And uh, this particular unit, when I received it, was missing the speaking tube, of course, <coughs> missing the power cord, of course. I was able to get around both those problems. The power cord came from a computer. I had to do a little bit of adapting, but it works fine. The speaking tube we'll get to later, uh, and the lack thereof, but I just wanted to go over the uh, basic unit. This is the mandrel. The cylinder attaches to the mandrel like this. You press it in and it locks in place. You press this knob to release it. Okay, so it's pressed in. Uh, this houses the uh, reproducer and the record cutter. And uh, in order to play your record, you press up. That's neutral, and that's record. Another problem that uh, it had is, uh, let me take this pulley cover off. <clears throat> Notice that it's running constantly now. This is where your speaking tube would rest. That's basically your on-off switch. Down, off, up, on. And also in this position, <coughs> shuts it off. When you close the cover, it shuts it off. Alright. Because it's missing the speaking tube, it's also missing the control button. So when you were going to uh, record something, you would hold the speaking tube up to your mouth, press the um, voice lever, and it would activate a solenoid, which then caused the mandrel to turn. Well, without that, I guess the good thing is it tends to stay in um, mandrel spin <laughs> position, which is fine. Now, when I got the unit, it was not rusty. It was in pretty good shape. Very, very little rust on the thing, but it was seized. This would not go back and forth. Uh, the pulley wouldn't uh, turn. Is uh, not in very good shape. The problem was it was adequately lubricated. That's a good thing. But the lubrication over the decades had hardened and it gummed up and caused everything to lock up. So all I had to do was clean off the old uh, gummy lubricant, re-lubricate the thing, and uh, it started to work. I'll show the underneath uh, in a bit here. Here was another problem. <clears throat> Notice that uh, the uh, pulley is spinning here. I don't think that's a bearing. I think that's the bearing housing which uh, was frozen. The reason I think it's a bearing housing is, oh, it stopped right there. There's um, a detent flat on it and there's also a detent screw. When I removed the detent screw, this pulley was not turning. I could not get the bearing to free up. However, I was able, by applying some, I don't know what I used, if it was a uh, goof-off or uh, uh, WD-40 Loctite, I don't remember, but I got it to spin. And you know what? Throwing a little 3-in-1 oil makes it spin quite freely. So for goofing around, for making recordings, playing stuff, it works fine. I got no complaints. This belt is an original... Thomas A. Edison Company, let's see, what does it say? Thomas, T-H-O-S, A. Edison Incorporated. It's got a number 63166. 
So that's an original belt made out of leather. It's cracked. It's probably not going to last a long time, but for the time being, it's supple enough to play this thing with no problem. Uh, let me unplug it. <clears throat> And I'll show you the back side of it. <coughs> it's got a rear cover that you can remove by uh, unscrewing it. I'll keep it off for the duration of the video. All right, and you can pull the forward cover forward, and there's the upper part of the guts. This is the uh, threaded rod that. Uh, I don't, know, I don't know what you call this, but it has the reproducer on it that this uh, runs on. Uh, it's got a bell so that when you get to one minute left of recording, it rings, and then when you're at the end of the disc, the disc, the uh, cylinder, it rings again. Runs smoothly. I don't have a clue what this is. But in neutral and in playback mode, it goes back and forth like that. It has wires going to it, so there's something electrical about it, but it's controlled, it's activated manually, mechanically by this, not mid, but mechanically by this wheel here. If anyone knows what that is, what it does, is it timing? Does it work with the governor? Is it supposed to hit something and tell you how fast it's running? I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it is what it is. I don't think there's anything else to show you back there. <clears throat> so let's show you the underneath part. Right. It opens up like that. It's on a hinge. And there's a little prop for it. It's got a screw on the bottom that's uh, used to keep, uh, keep the thing locked up. Here's the motor. It's an Edison Universal motor. Uh, it's got a four-weight governor. Here's a speed control knob. The machine will run uh, 90 to 130 volts AC or DC. And you've got a little lever here that uh, can be reached from underneath the box to uh, put it in uh, AC or DC mode. Let's put it in AC mode. This box houses the solenoid that controls the mandrel. Um, because I don't, I'm not able to control it, uh, it's basically just there. Uh, it's mounted on rubber grommets, which had hardened and cracked and for the most part were gone. So what I used was um, mold making putty, found it at Hobby Lobby, because I also make plastic models and stuff. Uh, and I found it just a little putty, two-piece, uh, two-part putty that you rub together and within a minute it forms rubber. So I made grommets out of that. It works fine. Uh, that's your on-off switch there. This is the rheostat for uh, the master speed control. I don't think there's really much uh, else uh, I'll do. I'll show here. Ugh, let's put it like that. Cool. Let's see if you can see under there, but there's the motor. And then the leather belt, that's a uh, tension wheel there. <coughs> that's what we got there. It was full of uh, shavings, real fine powdery stuff. I blew that out, and uh, otherwise it was clean. Let's put this back down. And put this back down. Okay, that's engaged now. Okay, let's go ahead and power the thing back up. Uh, it doesn't seem to want to run with this uh, cover here, so I just uh, leave it off. What happens is the cover tends to move the pulley back and the mandrel won't spin. So I leave it like that and it works great. <coughs> now, what do I do about a speaking tube and uh, a, a loudspeaker? Well, thanks to uh, Victrola guy. Thank you, Benjamin. You rock. Um, he recommended purchasing from Walmart a $1.87 transmission fluid funnel. I bought a few of these. I'll show you some of the variations that I made. Um, that goes here, but it doesn't fit. Uh, this is too small to fit 
uh, the uh, mouth of the reproducer. So what I did, here's a tube where I cut off, uh, do I have the tip? Anyway, I'll show you here. I cut off uh, the tip there, and guess what? It fits like a glove. That's very cool. All right. uh, however, I wanted to make some variations and do some experimenting. So I came up with this uh, 45 degree <coughs> copper uh, pipe fitting. Put some uh, electrical tape. These are electrical. There are four electrical contacts in there that uh, if I just stuck the copper in it, the solenoid activating the mandrel started going crazy. So I thought, ah, no, no, let's not do that. So I covered it in electrical tape. Fits perfectly. I found, I think this was a 97 cent or $1.29 funnel at uh, Walmart. Okay. There's one version right there. I use this to speak into, <coughs> and it works great. I'll, uh, I'll give you a demonstration here. Let me find, because uh, I recorded uh, music on it. Let me find a place past that. And uh, let's talk into it. Okay, so down is record, right? What hath God wrought? No, wait a minute. That's, a, that's the wrong one. Come here, Watson. I need you. No, no. Um, oh, okay, I got it. Shut up! Shut up! Don't bother me about your silly icebergs. I'm working cape race. No, wait a minute. Hello, hello, hello. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Ha! <laughs> Alright, cool. Uh, so let's uh, go back. Got a little bit of shaving there. I'll leave that alone. Let's play it. Let's find it first. All right, there you go. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that I had trouble finding um, where uh, stuff was, where I had recorded. Well, these dictation machines came with a uh, method of uh, helping you with that. Let me pause this real quick. Like magic, I'm back. Um, so, how, uh, how would you account for uh, where your recordings were? Uh, this isn't original. I just made these up. I've got some original ones coming in on eBay. But anyway, this uh, little uh, pad of forms uh, were made. You'd uh, take one off, place it in there, and uh, when you began your recording, uh, you would press L. And when you ended the recording, you would press L again. That's the length. Okay, so I've now dictated something that's uh, this long. What I actually uh, recorded on that part was uh, uh, Charleston. I'll show you how I did that. And if I wanted to make a correction, let's say I'm dictating a letter and I uh, goofed up, then I would press C and uh, it punched a little mark. I'll show you that. You see those little marks? Punch a little mark. So L is length. C is a correction. All right, let's get back to uh, my <clears throat> speaking tubes. I also made uh, this speaking tube. Fits into there. Again, it's uh, just a Walmart transmission funnel. I also uh, put some plastic uh, PVC pipe there 
to uh, make things fit. Okay, I told you I recorded Charleston. Let's see if we can hear it. Okay, that's enough there. So you get the idea. Um, how did I record that? <clears throat> now, I blended 1890s technology with <clears throat> 21st century technology and uh, did it this way. I just realized I can't really show you all the details because I used my smartphone uh, to uh, play the music. I went on YouTube, I found a song I like Charleston and I thought it would be cool to have it playing on an old um, unit like this. Uh, I made uh, this tube out of I think it's uh, the tail end of this, all right? And uh, plugged it in there and then held my smart phone speaker, which is like on the very edge of the back side of the smartphone, pressed play on the YouTube clip and let it run its course, recorded it, and came up with uh, a really cool recording. A little quiet. I'm sure there are more uh, sophisticated ways of uh, doing it. I just started playing with this, so I figure I might... Uh, put a little microphone or something, run it out of a guitar amp or something. I'll, I'll figure something out. I'm sure someone else has already done something much more sophisticated. But bottom line is, uh, that's what I have. If you want to run across one of these things, they're like the poor man's cylinder phonograph. <clears throat> uh, a uh, original Edison phonograph is going to cost you about 500 bucks. Something like this will cost you uh, five, ten to fifty dollars, and it can be a lot of fun. The cylinder I bought on eBay. It was covered in mold. It had um, recordings on it, and the recordings were just meaningless office dictations that weren't interesting. So, uh, lacking a shaver, I used. The method that uh, Benjamin Victrola guy recommended, uh, chemically shaving it. I used 3-in-1 oil, rubbing it across the cylinder, and it made it beautiful. Made it uh, uh, very, uh, very usable, very inexpensive way to make recordings. So there you have it. If you find one of these, you can make it work. Have fun with it. Talk to you later.